Let the attack of the awesome begin. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome, the podcast so awesome. That whenever Mike speaks, um, three babies die in their sleep. <laughs> God damn it, awesome. baby killer. <laughs> All right. I don't know if that's awesome or terrifying, but I think people will love it. It's all terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my co-hosts, JJ. Dang, dang right I am. I'm the co-host with the most, and I'm going to go make me some toast after this. Alrighty then. And we have two new co-hosts here. We have Rosenhacker. What? 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 Uh, oh, oh. Hi. Hi. Yeah, he just happened to be in the call, so we just said, uh, screw it, he, he could be part of the podcast, too. I'm getting paid for this, right? No. Uh, uh, in claps. You got three. <laughs> That was four. Why do you question my claps? Because you always get it wrong. That was three. <laughs> I, I distinctly remember four. Whatever. Introduced our last newer co-host, better than our last female co-host. Am I right, Mike? Yeah, I, yeah, you are right. Our last new co-host is from Austria, and she's Ruby. Hi guys, or like we would say in Austria, Servus. Also, Doug says that in one of his videos, Doug Walker, yeah. okay. after the Annie Night, someone taught him that, but he didn't say it right. It's Servus. But yes, she'll replace Susan. Yes, indeed. Because right. we hate her. <laughs> we now hate her. No. Uh... Anyways, anyways. Yeah, we do. I, I do. I'm mad. Okay. I don't want the whole podcast and all of our viewers to know. You hate everything. Yes, I do. Yeah, you hate I'm everything. Like from Love for Dead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The first topic. Right, Mike. The first topic we're going to talk about is uh, what in the world of, where we talk about what's going on in the world of movies, music, video games, and animation. Who wants to go first? Rosen. Okay, then. I actually prepare for this. We're going to judge you while you're doing this, too. We got, we got our notebooks and our papers and stuff, so we're writing stuff down. Yep. Okay, first up, um, recently the Green Lantern animated series was announced for Cartoon Network. Why? And, and it looks pretty bad, actually. Like, like the movie. Looks, no, not the... The movie sucked, but that's another rant. <laughs> um, no. No, uh, this this actually like looks like an old N sixty four game. No, oh, that's really bad. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. everybody, I don't know. Is the Green Lantern black? Uh, John Stewart. There's multiple Green Lanterns. It's a long story. But is he black? There's one of them. Yes. Not not in this one. This one's Hal Jordan. Now fuck this thing. I don't <laughs> want to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I love JLA because. Just JLU. Just, JLU because they had a black freaking Green Lantern. He didn't even need to be black. They just said, screw it, let him be black. And I was like, yes, it works. <laughs> Technically, that was the that was the character they were using at the time, at the time but whatever. Oh, just, it was so good. Yeah. Oh, well. That's why I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> yes, I'm not much of a skeptical guy, but not really. I will watch it. I'm just saying, like, it turns me off. I love seeing a black Green Lantern. I say that in one of my videos, actually. <laughs> So recently, the uh, the new Thundercats cartoon was leaked onto the, uh, onto YouTube. Actually, looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. Like, like it looks somewhat faithful to the original series. Um, and even though there's only like nine minutes of it, it still like looks interesting enough to me, for, to make me want to see it. Yeah. And in come on, the, be more compelling than that. What is so awesome about Thundercats that make them awesome? Um. They're cats, I guess. Snarf! That's what makes them more awesome. You got a little oh, thing. That's a little thing. Snarf does not bad. talk. He doesn't talk? That 
It's whack. I liked it. Him talking. It was funny. <laughs> I hated Starbucks. Really Him and Oracle. Seriously, I wanted to stab that little bastard. Snarf. I should. I should. Do, I should just start doing that instead. Instead, they go from the strategy of having of having him say snarf over and over again like the Pokemon anime to having him make random noises like the Pokemon games. Yeah. What? Nah, I mean, remember Orko of He-Man? Yep. It's kind of, well, then again, this is a new day and age. Back then, it was kind of necessary to have those old, annoying characters because, I don't know, maybe you wanted to sell toys about them. And whenever kids hug them, they'd be like, Schnarf! Or yeah. Orko or something like that. And just like, n now in this day and age, if you revamp something, you need to bring all the characters back and give them like a new look or, or something, but keep them in there. And have their still have the same character traits because, I mean, the nostalgia will disappear if you don't do that right. Even if the traits were terrible. Moving on to, uh, moving on to uh, news about everyone's favorite new cartoon. Spaghetti. Uh, no. <laughs> the phenomenon that has oddly swept the nation, apparently. Uh, the story was that um, the second season of My Little Pony was announced um, to be mostly in 2011, like up to episode 19. There's no, this hasn't been officially confirmed, but it has been added to the IMDb page, so it's a possibility. Today I will be concentrating on bands that I have seen live recently at the festival and, um, and I will talk a bit about their newest albums. And the first one was already released in 2010. It's about the new Linkin Park album, A Thousand Sons. And I think it's interesting to talk about this and to talk about reviews because they really changed their style there. Um, one guy writes, um, he said, he writes, um, it's uh, from, yeah, I, meant, I forgot to mention it's from the website uh, musicloversgroup.com and what he writes is A Thousand Suns is a concept album dealing with nuclear warfare. The album's title comes from a quote made famous by J. Robert Oppenheimer referring to the Hindu scripture if the radiance of A Thousand Suns were to burst at once into the sky that would be like the splendor of the mighty one in reference to the atom bomb. Um, yeah, and this is a more mature seasoned LP thirsting for new life in a post new metal world. And since Minutes to Midnight proposed a changing of the musical guard, then this could be considered the first conquest into a brave new world. Even if you are not a Linkin Park fan, you must listen to this album as there is something for everyone here. Yeah, my opinion about the new Linkin Park album is a bit different because when I heard it, I was kind of surprised. For me, this just didn't sound like Linkin Park anymore and I like their old style better, uh, which they followed in their albums Hybrid Theory or Meteora. And then Minutes to Midnight came out and even during that time, I already lost a bit of interest because it wasn't exactly my thing except for a few songs and the writer of the article sees their new album in a more positive light than me um, and but I must say although I don't really like it I don't know why but somehow I always have to think about new age music listening to the new songs and I can't get used to this oh. and so you're kind of like pushing on roses she likes, like, she likes old music, like the monkeys and whatnot. Yeah, I like... No, I... Yeah, I like rock music. I mean, not just rock music. I listen to a lot of different kind of styles. But this, it really sounds like New Age somehow. Not like Linkin Park, for me. I mean, this is just my impression, but I was like, oh my god, is this really Linkin Park or is this... Shakti Om, boom, I don't know. And, and yeah, 
I went to see them on a festival and I really tried to listen to the new stuff and get into it, but I ended up bored somehow and I couldn't wait to hear the songs. But I think that the writer of the article makes a very interesting point about exactly that problem of a band changing their style because he writes in the article... Um, there are a lot of filler songs, but, but they flow from song to song without it sounding awkward. We can argue all day long if a band still sounds like the same boring stuff, stuff or if they are trying something totally new and they aren't like the Linkin Park of the past all day long and not get anywhere. Lincoln, Lincoln Park, why did so many people even try to copy what they did? Because what they did was just new and unique for them. Anybody who did try to copy them were just Lincoln Park copies. So yeah. you can continue. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I like their old stuff a lot. Um, so it's just the new stuff. But I also think that he's right about um, his opinion that a band's style has to change and to evolve. It's easier for me to live with the fact that a band has changed their style into something that I don't like than not changing their style at all and doing the same stuff again and again. This is just boring after a while. For example, I have exactly the opposite problem with Nickelback. They don't change anything. It's just the same over and over for years now. There's no development and I got bored after some time. And I wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think about this? Would you prefer your favorite bands to keep up their style or change? I don't listen to bands, so I'm out of this question. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. You guys go ahead and I'll throw in my input at the end. Well, and um, what about your Favorite musicians, rappers, whatever. No. <laughs> Would you like them to keep their style or change it even if you don't like it? I like music that evolves with time, so yeah, I, I would like it for it to change. Yeah. Because that's the we live in a world where like back in the um thirties they were listening to banjo music and whatnot. Now we're in an age where we got bells, clicks and whistles just making a beat just for us. And that's just the whole song. You can make a freaking, you can make your voice into a song. What is that called? Uh, Vocaloid. Yeah, that. So, well, I'm, 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 I, li I like to look forward to what we do more with music in the future. So, yeah, I want it to change. How about you guys? Eh. What, that's your answer? <laughs> 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 Yeah. Meh. 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 That is the worst answer ever. <laughs> Wrong. You, I know, you lose. Good day, sir. sir. <laughs> what about you, yeah, Mike? It's, uh, it's a good and a bad answer. You know, you can't argue about his answer, but yeah. it also has no meaning. Yeah, that's no meaning. the two sides of the story. And that's why it has no point, and that's why nobody cares. <laughs> Yeah, uh, change is always good, so if some artist or band wants to change up their style, go ahead, go for it, try to see if it works, but if they stick to their same old crap all the time, it gets boring over time. So I like change over the same old shit every time. Yeah, me too, so everyone that had an opinion, except for... Uh, <laughs> Rosie, with me. <laughs> Rosie <Yeah>. the robot. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> Is that all you got? Uh, no, I have. Um, Bring more. Yeah, I have a second one. It's also a band I saw on the festival, and this time it is vlogging Molly and the new album, and um, it, it's also related to some articles about it. And um, it's now concerning music and changes. Vlogging Molly, for example, they kept their style, but there is a slight change towards adding more folk music to their punk-based style, as it was before. This is the reason why I personally like the new CD better than most of their older stuff, although I also like them. 
but maybe I just feel like this um, because the articles I found on BBC and uh, also in the Rolling Stone are more concentrated on exploring the content of the lyrics. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, is this boring? Shouldn't I read from articles? No, I was just leaning back and my head hit something and I was groaning because my head hurts now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Don't mind him. It ought to be said that a lot has come out in the wash since the day of the pokes to the extent that Celtic tinged punk, shamrock you might call it, might well stand as the most reactionary and creatively uninventive of all music's modern subgenres. Gone Gone are protest songs about the Birmingham Six and threats to scare the Camden Palace poofs, while the pal plays stand homilies about brotherhood and other notions of blue-collar bon homie. Even so, the lack of a cutting edge doesn't itself mean that such songs are lacking in charm, and each of the 12 compositions that makes up Speed of Darkness does feature a tune that the listener can whistle. And... <clears throat> It also talks about the frontman's claim about the music being authentic, but more about um, the music uh, trying to be authentically punk in the lyrics, uh, talking about factories and working in the factories, revolutions, and um, I want to say that I don't think that they just try to be authentic concerning being a punk band, but also in being an Irish band. None of the American bands that I saw on the festival ever mentioned where they were, were from. While Flogging Molly talked about being from Ireland several times or mentioned Guinness two times. And everyone knows Guinness, I guess. Do you know Guinness? Uh, hmm. Black beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come no, on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Irish beer. So it's not that well known. No, because we're over here in America and you're over there in the UK or Ireland or Europe or wherever you are. <laughs> well, that there's a lot of Irish people in in America. I think the article also the other article on Rolling Stone also mentions that Flogging Molly, the, the band Flogging Molly, lives in Los Angeles because they wrote the Los Angeles band, and I know that they're from Ireland. So. They seem to live here, I guess. And and I think that the funny thing about trying to be authentically Irish is that the fiddle lines, in my opinion, are definitely more folk-based based than Irish traditional. Because, you know, I have spent four months studying in Ireland and I attended a class about traditional music. And yeah, flogging, Molly, flogging Molly's lines... Uh, for example, the fiddle lines sound more like a broader folk tradition to me. There's almost no ornamentation, for example, which is central for traditional, I would say. And I have a question now uh, to you guys. How well is Flogging Molly known in the States anyway? Um, because since it's my first time working on the podcast, I don't know. It ain't nothing like the first you, time. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Them? Would you even I've listen to that? Them. I don't think I ever heard of them, so I've. I haven't heard any of their work, but I know who they are. Hmm? So you, one, one never heard of them, and one because they're very, very well known in in Europe, but I never know for America. I know that they live in America. A lot of Irish people do that, so. Okay. I think a lot of people in general live in America. Or yeah, I think that, uh, they are somewhat known, but I think the Dropkick Murphys are more popular here. Yeah, Dropkick Murphys are a similar band. Yeah, I also know them, but they are not my thing. It's it's too, I don't know. It's I can't say too hard. I can't f find the words in English, but they are too. too want to be manly and drinking and stuff and yeah it's it's not my thing i like flogging molly better or oh, the real mckenzie's do you know the real mckenzie's they're also in that kind of stuff and they're canadian nope 
Nope. Trying to look like Scotsmen, also wearing skirts. That's very positive. <laughs> you just like skirts, don't you? <laughs> yeah, on men, especially on men. Oh my god. Oh, the world is so messed up, but then again, different cultures around the world are so interesting. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, after Suburban Night, I really like to have a band all wearing the same Zelda costume that that Dark War. That's yeah. a really good band. No matter what music they play, that would look nice. They'll be called the Hyruleans or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we got Mr. Mike Mike. All right. Mikey Mike. Okay. You do the movies now, right? Yes, I do the movies now, yes. Uh, I'm going to talk about the... Recent... Unlike some chick that used to do the movies. Yes, unlike that other chick that used to do movies. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some releases that came out in the theater in the U.S. recently, last weekend. Oh, so, two movies came out last weekend in the, U in the U.S. One of them is called uh, Horrible Bosses. It's about... Who's that about? It? I'm just going to say that. It's about three friends who despise their bosses... And they want to kill them. Right. Yeah, so... Is it a horror movie? It's like a dark comedy. That's stupid. It should be a horror I know. Movie. Why would you immediately resort to murder? <laughs> exactly. But, but oh wait. my gosh, I hate my boss. He's the guy who pays me. But and wait. he's the one who hired me. You should hear what, what the bosses are here. There's. Let's talk about the characters. The characters are Nick, Dale, and Kurt. They're friends, and they... Like I said, don't, they, don't, they don't like their bosses. So Nick works in a financial firm for his boss named Dave, who abuses Nick constantly, and Nick has to put up with hopes of, of a promotion. But, oh. but Dave uh, instead gives Nick his desired job to himself, angering Nick. Now Dale, Dale ha as a, is a dental assistant to... Now, Dale's a, Dale, a dental assistant to uh, Dr. Julia Harris, who constantly wants to have sex with her knocked out patients, as well as Dave. That is disgusting. <laughs> that is disgusting. Yeah, I know. But uh, is also, uh, and then Julia even forces him to take a look at her while she wears only a lab coat and panties. Mm. <laughs> uh, lastly, what? Kurt... Lastly, Kirk uh, go, works at a uh, factory, an industrial company, and uh, Bobby is the boss, and he threatens to run the company down the, to the ground by having the overweight and handicapped employees fired along with doing cocaine and having prostitutes in his office. <laughs> so there's a reason why you want... Dr. Rocks up. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you want to kill these bosses, because they're just so bad... Yeah, but there's an easier solution. Have them arrested. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that came out uh, last weekend, and actually the the uh, the reception from the movie said it was really good. Uh, on, Rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, it's 74, 74%. It's fresh, so... Uh, according to the website, it says it's nasty, uneven, and far from the original, from original. But thanks to a smartly assumed cast, it makes the most of the solid premise. Horrible bosses works. <sighs> uh, the other one that came out last weekend was the Kevin James movie, also known as Zookeeper. Oh. Uh, shoot me. Uh, so Kevin James is obviously a zookeeper at the zoo. And he wants. We have to talk about this. <laughs> so he wants to uh, leave the zoo, but the animals at the zoo like him and want him to stay. So they break their code of silence and reveal they have possessed a human-level intelligence and, and speaking ability. <laughs> so they help Kevin James's character uh, coach him how to win a to win a girl. So that's pretty much it. Seriously, why, why talking animals? Why do they? What do they have to offer to help win a girl? They don't know nothing. Yeah, what he said. Sex with goats. 
Anyway, yeah, don't even mind watching Zookeeper. It looks bad. But it has that fat guy in it from the fat guy movie about the mall cop. Exactly, but I guess whoever's fans of that kind of movie, go ahead and watch it. And Maybe people who also like Dr. Doolittle? Yeah, like Dr. Doolittle, yeah, because they got the tuck animal factor in it, so... I don't know. If you're a fan of Kevin James and that Dr. Doolittle factor to it, check out uh, The Zookeeper. The movie was it was so bad, it kicked me off the call. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> There's the excuse. All right, then lastly, I'm going to talk about some uh, upcoming DVD releases in America. That's coming out Tuesday. Is it Lion King? No. <laughs> That's been out. the Lion King. Well, that, that came out on DVD a long time ago. I want it to be re-released out of the Disney vault. They're holding Bambi in there. We must go break into there. They, they, just, they just released Bambi out of the vault. They're holding Bambi at gunpoint. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yes, uh, the upcoming DVD releases is, uh, of course, the uh, sci-fi original movie Dino Croc vs. Super Croc. That's lame. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was this released by uh, Asylum Films? No, sci-fi. This that's a sci-fi original film, and they they're, re- oh, they're they're releasing it on the DVD. Uh, what else? There's Insidious, which is a horror film. I don't really care. Uh, the Lincoln Lawyer, featuring uh, Matthew McConaughey as a lawyer who lawyers out of a Lincoln town car. I already hate it. And the, and uh, Muriel, which I is already a, hate it. <laughs> and the last one is Muriel, which is a freaking biofilm about some blah blah. I don't care. But yeah, Dino Crack versus Super Crack, really? This it's like Mega Mega Shark versus Big Octopus. Exactly. I don't know. If you're interested in buying these DVDs, go ahead, buy them on Tuesday. And that's pretty much it. That's what I'm going to do every week. That is so lame. I give you, you need to get into actors and how actors are awesome and how they shouldn't die and how people should love them. So, yeah, uh, JJ, what do you got for video games? I don't know. Shit. I, I, I really I wasn't really paying attention. Um, what am I going to do? What the freak am I going to do? You should die. You should have this planned out ahead of time, JJ. I do not. Okay. I'm the greatest. Or would you just do it? I'm like the greatest in improv, and I can make things go in any direction that I want it to go. Okay. What do you got for video you guys, games? Well, what do I got? Well, what do you got for freaking movies? Didn't you already do yours? Yes, I already did. So move on to you, JJ. You're next. Well, then fine. Devil May Cry. You guys heard of this game, right? Hello? No. I didn't, but I'm... Yeah, we keep losing ...concerning computer games. I just know a few. The ones that I play. The girly games. You girl. <laughs> yeah. I'm not supposed to play video games. Yeah, I play Sims and Final Fantasy. Oh, wow, that was out of nowhere. I didn't expect you to actually say Final Fantasy. <laughs> but, yeah, Devil May Cry. They, they announced a new one, and it's just called DMC Devil May Cry, which I'm not exactly sure if that's a working title or anything. But it does not have anything to do with Capcom, and it's going to be done by this new company called Ninja Theory. And I'm hoping that it's not another Team Ninja, because they are the people that did the Dead or Alive series. If you guys don't know about that series, basically, it's a fighting game, which they try to turn into a beach volleyball game, and it's all about women's breasts jiggling everywhere. <laughs> and you mentioned that this was a fighting game, a fighting game for like like Tekken or uh, Mortal Kombat or like this or different? Because those are the fighting games that I know and played. Yeah, maybe because I mentioned Mortal Kombat and 
it also has a lot of boobs in it. Yes, the new one. Yes, have you? Well, I, I shouldn't be like flanking myself on these, but yeah, uh, in Mortal Kombat, yeah, they just have women with huge racks and they're just fighting. And I, I mean, does that disturb you in any type of way, Ruby? No, I'm more the type of the of um, some characters' teeth. You know, there are two characters with very long teeth, and they are very scary. And every time I see them, I'm like, ah. But boobs are okay. They're <laughs> nice, soft, and, and I'm used to them because I have some of my own. But those teeth, well. When I think you're talking about Melina, because yeah, that, she, yeah she's, she's the one who's trying to uh, hide her face, but trying to discourage uh, her body. Yeah, yeah. Her boobs are nice, but her teeth are not. But at least you can see her teeth. It's different with Baraka and his teeth. He's very scary. Okay, now what else can I talk about besides talking about breast and video games and Devil May Cry? Let me look up Ninja Guide in since we're on the to topic and see if they got some shit cook 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 cooking up in the freaking oven. God damn, am I terrible at this? <laughs> okay, you guys know about this game called Metroid Other M, right? Mm-hmm. I'm only saying this slow because I want you guys to understand every single word that I say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> anyway, this has been uh, introduced as a very positive game. I know that a lot of people know about Metroid because it's about a, a woman inside of a space robot suit and oh my gosh it's a chick <laughs> but no at the end of the day this game actually kind of ruined the franchise because now with um giving what's her name Samus I guess mm -hmm. Samus a new voice and whatnot to go off of and shoot shit she kind of lost that personality trait that she was an independent woman going around destroying shit and just being awesome to some windy angsty female that needs to be saved every moment and has to answer to a man and whatnot I'm not a feminist or anything but seriously if you ruin a character trait and or get add a character trait to a character that didn't have any already is that really a bad thing I mean, the game is still fun. It's just that people really don't like the character anymore. So I wonder if that's going to mm, do something to the selling points of the game. Do you guys think that would actually do something to um, a game series? Like, say, I have a character. I don't know. What's it really? Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. And they took away his cocky attitude and just made him a really nice hedgehog, and he's such a sweetheart <laughs> and everything. Do you guys think people will stop buying the game just because of that? Uh... Honestly, I want to like my main character. If the main character pisses me off, I will probably finish the game. But if the game is still fun, but I will be highly annoyed and I will think about buying the next one maybe. Depends on um, how much the annoyingness of the character was in relation to the fun of the game. Maybe. No, it's kind of like how they took out Skids and Muff Flap out of the new Transformers movie. Yeah. Which is actually had a game, too. See how I segue into that? They had a stupid game that my little cousin just bought, and he's playing it, and it's a shit game. Just like the movie. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it, wasn't a sh it wasn't a shit movie, by the way. It was all right, but it wasn't like anything spectacular shit. <laughs> okay. No, we are not done. We are not done until I say that we are done. Really? They have recently announced, yes, we, they have recently announced for the Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS, Super Smash Bros. And everybody likes Super Smash Bros. Yes. And what, are you bored? Do you not get excited by hearing about another? That's the most That's selling That's awesome, title. man. It's awesome, man. On all of the Nintendo consoles, it's like the best-selling game. Yes, so, it is. It seriously. Is. <laughs> if they put it on two... Oh, don't be that. You sound like you're orgasming, and you're going to like get it all <laughs> over your face. Come on, now. 
I'm sorry. But yeah, they're going to put it on both consoles, and seeing how well they sell, that might be just a killer app, and we can take down the PS3 and 360 all at once. And then it'll just be Nintendo on top of the market, and then at the end of the day, I can feel good about being an Nintendo fanboy. Okay, then. Yeah, so that is my lecture for the class today. Class dismiss. What's next, Mike? All right, uh, let's segue into the weird news featuring me. You're weird. I am weird. That's why I'm doing the weird news for the podcast. You're weird. That, I, that's the weird news. Everybody, guess what? Mike is freaking weird. Oh, is that a shocker? Ooh. Nah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Chili's. Have, have you guys gone to Chili's before? Got a Chili's by you? Chili's baby back ribs. A Chili's mistakenly serves three children tequila on the 4th of July. It's like the uh, Applebee's story that I touched on in the past where they served alcohol to the kid. This time it's Chili's serving tequila to kids. Apparently, kids in what age? Uh, I would tell you. Uh, the, the, the story is that a family walks into Chili's. They were it's a hot day on the Fourth of July, and they asked for they ordered three fruit, three fruit smoothies. So they come out, and uh, the kids who are age eight, six, and one, what? <laughs> uh, the eight year old complained about the taste. So when they when the mother tasted it, she found out it contained tequila. <laughs> Oh my god. You no, know, that is really weird. Because um as much as I know, um you are not supposed to drink any kind of alcohol before you're twenty one in the States. We can exactly. do that being sixteen. But um, you know, what? with that kind of restrictions and then they give tequila to kids. One year old, eight year old and six year old, you know, that would even be be too early for Austrians. Yeah. Twenty years too early. <laughs> uh, yeah. So apparently the, the children children were, were not uh, intoxicated by it. Oh, they weren't sure if they were in, intoxicated or not. But the eight year old passed out at the park during the fireworks show, and the six year old seemed extra wild. KFC now like KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, KFC chicken bones causes a four-car pileup. Somebody ate some KFC chicken. The guy threw the threw the bones across the road at some friends. A police officer in an unmarked car saw him and braked suddenly, resulting in a four-car crashing into each other. One car ended up on the roof on another, and three people were slightly slightly injured. What? How? <laughs> because there are a lot of black people involved. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh man, we need to get some chicken. And then they have to, they just go in destruction and do a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, the answer is the question, why the chicken bone cross the road? Oh, <laughs> oh my god, that was so lame. <laughs> but yeah, that is totally weird. I know. <clears throat> Anyways, the last article I got here is all about America's wacky fair foods. You know, you go to the fair and you get, like, corn dogs or uh, elephant ears or, uh, what is it, funnel cakes. Well, nowadays they come, people come to these fairs for uh, some wild and crazy foods. So, I'm going to... I'm going to go through these as fast as I can here. Uh, from North Carolina, there's a fair food called uh, Kool-Aid Pickles. <laughs> uh, pickles soaked in the sugary kid beverage. God. So freaking weird. This sounds nasty. It does. So what? Uh, from Indiana, it's uh, the hot beef sundae. Uh, when fairgoers tired of their iconic ribeye steak sandwich, Indiana Beef Cattle Association invented the hot beef sundae layered with mashed potatoes, marinara beef, 
gravy, cheese, corn, sprinkles, and a cherry on top. That sounds freaking delicious, man. I don't know what's that. Or the fact that that exists or the fact that I now really want one. <laughs> oh, there's a lot more on this list. I just got started here. Uh, Arizona, we got mealworm-covered caramel apples. <laughs> God. Ew. <laughs> mealworm-covered caramel apples. Oh, uh, yeah, it uh, uh, yeah it's pretty sums it up right there. It's uh, oh, car- it depends. Are the worms covered in caramel too? No, it's the caramel apple, but it's sprinkled on top with mealworms. Okay, that's that's. Uh, extra stuff. <laughs> hmm. uh, let's keep uh, moving on to the next like, one. No, no, I can't think of an analogy. Uh, Florida, Florida has a cheeseburger with fried oh, ice cream. How that can you fry ice cream? Oh, there's there's a technique where you fry ice cream. You think you gotta uh, stick your dick in it? Ha ha ha, JJ. Uh, I am dead serious. I was hoping when you said we were gonna talk about food today, I thought like we were gonna be like eating like I don't know giant fried hands or something, <laughs> or like I don't know somebody managed to turn their piss into a shake or something. <laughs> I I know I think I know what you mean with fried ice cream. I think it's the kind of ice cream we wouldn't fry, but we would set on fire. There's but the, it's not just ice cream. There is some cake kind of stuff around it, and then you put it on fire, and then you can still eat it. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's a burger. Ice cream is just pretty much into a, in in a in a crumb cake kind of batter, and then you drop it into the deep fryer, and it comes out cold in the middle and hot on the outside. Yeah, it's like that, yeah. Yeah, but apparently in Florida... A burger? Into a burger, yeah, right on top, with a bun and all the works. <laughs> it's uh, a sweet hybrid known as the milkshake burger. Okay, that... I'm not going to lie, that sounds really good. Yeah, so does a bacon sundae. Did you tell them about that one? Oh, yeah, Wendy's got the bacon sundae. Yeah, they had that back up in March, and it was freaking delicious, man. Yeah. Uh, I think Denny's not Wendy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Denny's. Hey, hey, Ruby, do they have uh, Denny's out in Austria? Do they have what in Austria? Denny's? Yeah, Denny's. No, we have McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken's. Um, Subway, anything else, Burger King, but Denny's, no, I haven't heard of that. It's, yeah, uh, let's say moving on to the next one, uh, Texas with fried beer. <laughs> yeah, let's just, fried beer. Fried beer? That one I heard of. Yeah, they, uh, put into, like, a, uh, pretzel dough and they just fry it up. <laughs> oh, uh, Do you fry everything or put it into a burger if yeah. you get birds? Yes. Or, or? At, at American fairs, we fry everything. It's the American way. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's also the Irish way somehow. All right. Um, Montana is fried butter balls. Okay, fried butter balls. See, just- Someone managed to... Right about this already. Really? Please tell me that isn't literal. Uh, Someone managed to fry butter? That's yeah. awesome because I have friends who tried to fry butter for a long, long time. And they're discussing how to fry butter for ages. And they weren't sure that this is possible. But now we know that it's possible. Yes, it is possible. I even thought about making a video about how to fry butter because I thought it's stupid why should someone fry butter but in america yeah you know the land of eight possibilities it's a normal thing it seems all right uh oh california is next on the list Sucks. oh boy let's see what does california oh, yeah have? yeah rosie You're, this is your home place your home state yeah what does Cal- yep. let's see california has deep fried white castle burgers Really? Yeah. Uh, the Orange County Fair is dedicated to frying that uh, vendor called the Heart Attack Cafe. Chose a deep fried 
Butter Stan as a new name after being uh, pressured with the legal action by Arizona's Heart Attack Grill. Even more okay. stupidous, uh, Chicken Charlie's Fried White Castle Chicken Cheeseburgers. Yeah, White Castle. Uh, what else we got? Kansas. Pickle Pop. What the fuck? Where is the freaking hands for dinner, man? I want something <laughs> nasty, something that you ain't supposed to eat. Can we eat some dog nose or something? <laughs> if you remember back in uh, Brad Tries, um, all that fair stuff, they uh-huh. had, what was it? Fried gator or something. Yeah. Or chocolate-covered alligator. Something like that, yeah. So I... it was a chocolate-covered alligator moment. <laughs> Oh god, that was lame as well. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kansas State Fair's answer to a freezer pop is just filled with brainy pickle juice. Ugh. Pickle pop. That is fucking nasty. Ooh, Massachusetts with fried jelly beans. <laughs> oh my god. The, the, the jelly beans are dipped in batter before being uh, deep fried, so you got deep fried jelly beans. Oh joy, candy and deep fried. That's just, I don't know. Oh, my place, Wisconsin. Oh, oh what do we got? Uh, Irish stew on a stick. What the heck is Irish? <laughs> How? How do you do Irish stew on a stick? With Irish cream on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, apparently, in my state of Wisconsin, we serve Irish stew in a pastry shell for a portable, utensil-free meal. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know that. I'm surprised I've... And that is it. That's the weird American wacky fair foods. Can we talk about how uh, chicken fat or chicken nuggets is made from chicken fat? Yeah, you just we just did. Well, can can I tell them that uh, horses anuses are what makes the patties on Mc McDoubles? <laughs> That's not true. Hey, 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 Ruby, what what type of bad food do you guys eat out in Germany? I know that, that or out in Austria because I know out in Scotland they eat haggis, but we need you to outdo Susie so we can we can hate on her some more. <laughs> um, what kind of bad food do we have here? I think I don't know if we really have something that no one would like. I think in Austria it's more a matter of taste, which. For example, what I don't like is um, the, nah? the, you know, a pig's belly. That actually sounds good if it's deep fried. Because, because <laughs> it's very fattening and I hate fattening meat. Oh. But guys like that a lot. So, but we don't have something that's generally disgusting like haggis, for example, which Ah, oh yes, we have one thing we have something called a black sausage. This oh, this is a, it contains white bread and 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 a lot of blood. And uh, I like it. I think it tastes good, but a lot of people find that disgusting because I wonder why. Have <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat that. Oh boy! I want to stick a fork in it and just like like put in some syrup and just just like bite into it. <laughs> no, I got one. He got one. All right. <laughs> this one's not that bad. It's uh, apparently in California you can like get a burger with a fried egg and pineapple on it. Yeah. I oh. think that sounds good. Yeah. Pineapple. That doesn't really sound all that bad. Yeah. Pineapple and a fried egg. Yeah, I, I think it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. Hawaii pizza. I don't know if you have that. It's... Yep. Yeah. And yeah. I like that a lot, so... 
I can eat fruit with almost everything. Maybe that's... Maybe I just have a strange kind of taste. Okay. Let's move on. You guys are so unexciting when you talk about this. Be like, man, I love eating these big old bologna sandwiches. Who are you? <laughs> that's what you gotta do. I love this next segment called the most awesome of the week. Where we talk that's about... Me. No, uh, we talk about me. We don't talk about you. You're not the most awesome every week. Well, this, yes, I am. Th this week you are, not next week. Yes. I'm just kidding. You are awesome every week. Uh, the most awesome of the week. Who wants to start off? Who's got the most awesome? I guess I'll do it. Animation. All right. This week I'm giving it to the new release, Green Lantern Emerald Knights. For those who don't know me, I'm a huge Green Lantern fan, and having Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan was a huge plus for this. It, it just came out on June 7th. Or wait, June 7th. But this is July 7th. Whatever. It, still counting it. Um, so, yeah. What the Go fuck? Go check that out. What the hell did you just... <laughs> you're like, mm, 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 mm. Were you, like, humping the couch for a second? <laughs> no. <laughs> you literally, you stopped in your sentence and you just wanted to hump the couch. What, what couch? I don't know. The one you just humped. You probably raped it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's, that is a tag of the awesome for you. <laughs> All class. <laughs> Who's next? Ruby. Okay. Um, my song of the week uh, is uh, from yesterday by 30 Seconds to Mars. Um, also because I've seen the band during the festival and I have listened to the band a lot since then. And it's not only because I like their music, also because Jared Leto, is that how you pronounce him? Jared Leto? Or... I don't know. Tell me how you pronounce him. I don't know. Just you can butcher it all you want because I do it all the time. Okay. Butcher it. Okay. Yep. And because he is such a good entertainer, and he really did a good job um, making uh, making a show on stage, and he really kept the crowd excited. And he even let chosen people come up on stage, and they looked like they had lots of fun up there, and for yesterday is one of my favorites and it's the song of the week because I was a bit sad that they didn't play it yes all right it. interesting all right the most awesome movie of the week is the original sci-fi movie called swamp shark why, you may ask? Cause, because Swamp Shark is actually a good original sci-fi movie, despite the rest of them out there. It has Christy Swanson. The lesson's true? It's actually... I, I watched it when it came out on June 25th on Sci-Fi, and it stars Christy Swanson, and the plot of the movie is pretty much... Uh, there, it's, it's based in Louisiana, and there's a shark loose uh, in a swamp and they gotta fucking kill it and it's good for a sci-fi film that's not saying much I, I let me elaborate more they use less cgi oh okay then yes they don't heavily use cgi as the other ones do they actually had a uh like a paper mache shark in the waters they used as a prop a couple of times yeah that's the most awesome movie of the week. Creative and developed by Naughty Dog. Yeah, that's right, kids. Um, I'm choosing an old franchise. Actually, two old franchises because, well, back in time when we were just kids and we just had our little disk drive systems called PS1s instead of N64s, which I hope you guys didn't have. Actually, I had an N64. My brother had a PS1. <sighs> Who all had a PS1? Raise your hand. Um, I can't see him. Raise him higher. 
<laughs> I take that as everyone. So I was N sixty four kid. You suck. <laughs> anyway, um, I am doing this game. It's called Crash Bandicoot, and um, it was created by. I'm not even sure exactly who it was created by because if I don't give any rights to the creator, I'm gonna get sued by Bandicoots. <laughs> but seriously, it was created by Activisions. And they had, like, different companies, and it was creative and developed by Naughty Dog. And now they're developing, I think, the Ratchet and Clank games? Or no, actually, no. Uncharted. Yeah. Yeah, they're uh, doing Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, I think Ratchet and Clank, or Jackson Daxter. One of the two. But basically... Uh, it's created by Naughty Dog. Yeah. And I think by Carrie's Visions also. Yep. And they cre- and then they create Spyro the Dragon as well. Yep, Spyro the Dragon is also on that list because they were pretty much like competing games on the PS1. And I don't know, at the time they wanted to use a mascot. PS1 didn't want a mascot. But then again, over here in Sony America, they're all like, oh no, we need a mascot. They got Sonic for Sega. They got Mario for Nintendo. We need a mascot. (laughs) And then it turns out that we don't even need mascots anymore because we live in a day and age where having mascots is really lame. (laughs) No, seriously. All we need is Master Chief, Mario, and the God of War. What's his name? Kratos? Kratos. Yeah, that's all we need is mascots. A really (laughs) kick-ass plumber, a really, really badass space marine, and a kick-ass god. That's what we need. And you're trying to bring in some dragon or some hedgehog or some (laughs) bullshit-ass bandicoot or something. No, (laughs) bullcrap. We got some kick-ass mascots nowadays in this age. So, that's my awesome... Awesome game of the week. Ah, it's Crash Bandicoot. And if you want, go check out Spiral the Dragon. They're both available on the PS3 network, and I hope you guys have PS3s or PSPs. So, yeah. I want one. No, you don't. <laughs> yes, I want one. Recently, they, they had that little problem with the um thingy thing with the PSN network, but they had a welcome back ceremony, but that has recently ended. So, I feel all for... Bad for you guys who didn't download Mod Nation Racers or Little Big Planet or any other games they had available for download because Infamous. you could have got them for free. Yeah, Infamous too. I wish they had prototype one, instead. but yeah. No, no, no. I got two. I got Little Big Planet and Infamous, and I got PSP. Plus. No, I mean, I mean Infamous one. You said Infamous two. Oh yeah, no. I wish they had. Uh, yeah, Infamous. I wish they had a uh, prototype instead. And that's the end of my awesome blog segment. I hope everyone took good incitement from it. Mm. Okay. I'm twirling my mustache as I'm saying that. (laughs) (laughs) Mwah. All right. Bring me spaghetti. All right. We go to the last segment of the podcast known as the Attack Squad Q&A, where listeners of this podcast send in questions for us to answer on the podcast. Do we got any for Rosie or Ruby? Uh, we got one for everyone to answer. Really? Even yeah. Ruby? What? Really? Oh, yeah. Rosie, he's happy. He's like, yeah! You probably got it from your old girl. You probably got it from Pugsley. And she's asking, why are you coming over here to Jersey? <laughs> yeah, there's a question for everyone to answer. I mean, like, for all, for all of us to answer. Like, if you could visit any location in the world, where would it be? I'd go with probably Tokyo, because I've, I've always wanted to see Japan. For me, it's hard to decide for one. I mean, my favorite one was always Island, but I have been to Island for four months now, so I have to decide for another one, and it might be the next one. Which, yeah, I think Iceland or Sweden would be the next one. I think I'd decide for Sweden. It's Sweden, definitely Sweden. I always wanted to go to motherfucking China so I can go and I can walk or maybe even jog on the Great Wall. And then I will do a review there and I will be all like, ah, love the freaking Great Wall. (laughs) (laughs) Look how long it is. And it will just be me jogging. And it will be so epic, and I will throw the background, uh, uh, the founders or frontiers, uh, 
the pro- the proclaimers, their song in the background. I would walk five hundred <laughs> miles. It would be the greatest <laughs> freaking review ever. <laughs> and I'll be all like, "You want to know who made this? Motherfucking slaves made this freaking wall." <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and after that, I blow it up and be all like, "Ha!" <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. I'm out. <laughs> Before the Chinese men come and get me. Well, that would be the greatest freaking, freaking vacation ever. And I want you guys to come with me, too, just so you can be my scapegoats. And then I'll be on the plane back there. I'll probably go visit Rosenhacker in Japan. Crikey. Yeah. Well, I'll go to the to the outback to Australia so I can fuck some kangaroos. No, I'm just, just no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I, I I will I will love to go to Australia. I have to expect you to say, why do you think they have those couches? <laughs> no, I, I I would absolutely love to go to Australia to see those kangaroos and Sydney, Australia, and just to hit up on some Australian vibes. That's how I am a player. Player. All right, uh, we got a question for Rosenhacker. Okay, then. Well, then, the question is, was it hard to make the transition from text blogs to doing videos? Yeah, Rosen Hacker. Well, well, it was uh, somewhat hard at first. You know, I pretty much just practiced editing, doing, like, five-second movies and stuff for a little bit. But, you know, it wasn't too hard, but it was a little difficult. All right. Yeah. Short and sweet. <laughs> All right, JJ, we got a question for you. What do you think is the best game soundtrack? Uh, Motherfucking, I can't even think of a really kick-ass. Wait, wait, wait. You guys ever heard of this game? It's the worst Sonic game in all of freaking history. Sonic R? No, shut up. No, no, yes, but I I like that soundtrack too. But it is a (laughs) Sonic. It's Sonic 06. Yeah, I just said Sonic is either R or 06. Yeah, 06. That had a kick uh, soundtrack. It had the motherfucking His World. That was just such an epic song. And it went with such a shitty game. <laughs> but yeah, I like, I really love the soundtrack of Sonic 06. That's the only thing that makes it good. Because they did remixes to this one song called Sweet Dreams or Dreams Come True or by Dreams Come True, with Akon. And then after that, they got this one song by Bentley Jones called Dreams of Absolution. And then they got Crush 40 doing this one song uh, remix of uh, Shadow the Hedgehog's theme. It's just it's such a good game, <laughs> just for its music. And that is why I bought the game, just so I can listen to it anytime I want. I don't even want to play the game. It sucks. You could just get this soundtrack album. I want to get the sound. I want to get the freaking game. I'm a gamer, not a music guy with headphones around my face. <laughs> Gosh. But yeah, that's a, that is a great, yeah, that's a great soundtrack. <sighs> Good. Seriously, I like all Sega music, so yeah, like they just got, I just, I listen to Sega Radio, which is like a podcasting radio that just plays Sega music from their different games. So I advise you guys, just go listen to their music. It's amazing. All right. And the last question is for myself. And where do you find these weird stories? It also it almost reminds me of Nash's show, but somehow funnier when you read them. Don't know why. Well, I get my weird news stories from a site called AOL Weird News. They provide the weirdest news I have ever read in my life. And thanks for the compliment saying it's funnier than Nash's show. Nash! I love Nash's show. I love him and this guy on YouTube, actually. I gotta give him a shout-out real quick. His name is uh, Fluffy. And he has a show called Fluffy Talks. Oh, yeah, I saw his videos, yeah. Yeah, I just, he does weird news as well, and that's the only reason why I convinced... Uh, we're gonna be dropping a few things in uh, in in the podcast, but... But um, I convinced uh, Mike we could still keep weird news because I like hearing about weird news. Exactly. Yeah. But when Mike says it, it sucks, so you, you, you suck. Oh, hey, at least one person says it's funnier, so shut up. It's suicide. No, 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 you will die. No, no, you will die. 
Uh, bitch, I am not your slave. I will not die. <laughs> yes, you you are my fucking slave. You're on my contract here. It says right here that you say whatever I say. Oh, yeah, and by the way, please, people, 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 I'm being serious as ever. Do not take this as serious as, like, we were just making it. Yeah, I'm black, and yeah, I'm saying I'm a slave is a bad thing. But still, that's not a bad thing because this is all fun within friends. So don't take offense. But, yeah. bitch, I am not your slave. <laughs> just because I got a contract by you doesn't mean you can rule me. Okay, we got any questions for Ruby or any more questions for me? No, that's it. It's kind of short this week. I thought you said we had questions for Ruby. I said all of us. I didn't say that. So don't put words in my mouth. All right, freak out. Well, I got a question for Ruby. Okay. Yes? Okay. When your time, uh, when did you first, like, had contact with uh, that guy with the glasses? Oh, that was, <clears throat> that was in 2009, actually. Some were, someone in, in December, I guess. Um... When uh, my ex-boyfriend came up, I was like, like really stressed and pissed and about college and everything. And he, he said, Aww. you have to watch that. It's funny. And I was like, oh, my God, is it this kind of Internet video stuff again? Why do you always force me to watch that? Leave me alone and stuff. And then um, and he said, yeah, but it's about alone in the dark. And. He knew that I've seen Alone in the Dark, this, you know, the Uwe Ball movie, mm -hmm. and it really sucked. And when I heard that, I thought, okay, I have to give it a try if it's about Alone in the Dark, because I've been talking about this movie since years, how bad it is and how much it sucks. And then I saw his review, and it was really funny. And after that, um, I watched all the Nostalgia Critic episodes, and when I was done with them, I also wanted to see other people's work, like Spoonie, or Angry Video Game Nerd, or also um, some of Linkara stuff, and then I really got into this internet video stuff, although in the beginning I was like, oh no, don't show me that. <laughs> Those geek people are crazy. Nerds. Nerds. Yeah, I mean, I always like, nerd myself, but um, this internet video stuff was new for me and then I got so into it that I started making my own stuff actually and it's all Duck Walker's fault no it's my fault but um, it's your fault for getting addictive you cannot blame other people for that <laughs> <laughs> like, no, you're an addict if you do hey if he's broadcasting addictive stuff it is my fault it's like crack <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, no, but that's how it happened, basically. Does that answer your question? No. I, I feel I feel ruined. You didn't <laughs> no. <laughs> I got one more question for you. Okay. What color is your hair? My hair? I don't know. Like a lot of girls on these like on the internet like to change their color of their hair. And like uh, I have the same color of hair since two or three years uh, now, and it's the natural color of my hair because I'm, I got sick of coloring it. I did it a lot when I was younger, but since about three years, I have my natural color, and it's dark brown, like in the videos. Huh. That's lame. I thought you were like going to be like in another Obscurus Lupa and color it red. No. <laughs> I wish you were a redhead so I can laugh at you and be like, ah, you're a ginger. Oh, well, I got to find some trait that I can nope. laugh at you about. That's not possible because my dad is a Persian. Wait a second. You're from Austria. Shouldn't you be blonde? Um, my mother is blonde, but my dad's from Iran, so he's black-haired and has a terrorist nose. No, <laughs> I always say that, but um, that's why I'm dark-haired because my dad's a Persian and my mother's Austrian that's why I have blue eyes I'm a kind of mixture between them she's a mutt <laughs> yeah I'm half perverse she's a muggle like I always say she's a muggle or a moogle <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Actually, I got one more question. One more. Okay. How are you liking Attack yeah. of the Awesome? Yeah, I like it a lot because it's great fun um, to talk about stuff with you because it's funny. I like your kind of humor. I like the kind of way you talk to each other in a very nasty kind of way, and I have something to love. And, yeah, I think we're going to have a great time, except if you're annoyed by me, which I don't know. Am I a douchebag like yes. Mike? <laughs> no, you're not a douchebag. You're not allowed to call the girls douchebags because, I mean, they're females. They're the estrogen. They're like the mothers of the content, uh, con con so, uh, podcast. So I'm more like a bitch or a stupid whore or... Yeah, whore. Am I even supposed to say that on a podcast, or do you have to no, blank no, that out? You're the whorish whore, even though I wanted to give that to Susie as the title, but since she's no longer here and I'm never going to bring her up ever again, you're the new whore. Never going to bring Thank you, you so up. much. <laughs> whore. Okay, Mike. You no, know, that is so nice of you. I really <laughs> feel appreciated now. It means a lot of me hearing that from you. All right. I'm calling or <laughs> closing thoughts. Mike, take home. Closing thoughts. Here's, before. A, here's, a, here's some closing thoughts. We got four people on now. Yeah. It's actually make it, it makes it more interesting because now we got more voices instead of me just making fun of Mike and just ignoring Rosen Hacker in general. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a closing thought. Boy, <laughs> Okay, with that, uh, we are saying goodbye, and this has been Attack of the Awesome Podcast with your host Mike and the co-hosts of JJ, Rosenhacker, and Ruby. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. I better be getting a paycheck for this. You're not. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Well, bye. <laughs> I hate all of you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.